which camera brand clinched the title of best-selling camera in 2023? Did Canon, Nikon, or Sony emerge victorious? And did Fujifilm and Panasonic cameras make a significant impact? Map Camera, a distinguished Japanese camera retailer, released their data on the top 10 mirrorless cameras of 2023. And the results may indeed catch you off guard. So stick around after this short message for all the details. But first, subscribe to this channel for a chance to win a Canon EOS R5. I'll be giving one away to one lucky subscriber once this channel reaches 100,000 subscribers. Anyone above the age of 18 with a valid mailing address is eligible. Additional terms and conditions are linked in the description down below. We regularly report on Yodabashi camera sales as they disclose their top 10 camera sales every two weeks, and this has become a customary practice for us. However, noteworthy disparity emerges when comparing the sales figures of Yodabashi to that of Map Camera, both esteemed Japanese camera retailers. It's important to note though, despite a substantial sample size, regional variations might lead to divergent outcomes when juxtaposed with the camera markets of the Americas and Europe. Without further ado, let's get right to the results. In number one, we have the Nikon Z8. It was announced back on May the 10th and started shipping on May the 25th, but this was halfway through the year and this is rather significant. The fact that we have the Nikon Z8 in first place, despite only being on the market for about six months, half a year, is pretty impressive. It shows how good this camera is compared to the competition. The Nikon Z8, after all, is, well, it takes the Canon EOS R5 and builds upon it, producing even better results in terms of video going to 60 frames per second. And in terms of stills, well, 20 frames per second, lossless raw, it's a very, very solid camera. And I recently voted the Nikon Z8 as the best camera in 2023. But in second place now, let's turn our attention to Canon. The Canon EOS R6 Mark II is the only Canon camera to show up in the top 10. It was announced back in November of 2022 and has been selling quite well for the entire year. And in third place, we have the Nikon ZF. Now what's really surprising about this camera is that it was released in late October. And that's only what, two, three months of sales? The fact that the Nikon ZF has shown up in third place after only being announced a couple of months ago is pretty impressive. I, I like this camera when it came out. I mean, it's hard not to look at the Nikon ZF. Uh, maybe some of you don't like that retro design. You want a cool looking modern design instead of a cool looking retro design. But we can't hide the fact that this is the second Nikon camera in the top 10, first place to the Nikon Z8, and third place now goes to the Nikon ZF, another camera that's only been out for a couple of months. Nikon's done really well here with cameras that weren't released back in January, but were released midway throughout the year or in the third quarter. But now let's turn our attention to Sony. Sony performed very well at Map Camera in 2023, just like they did back at Yodobashi. The Sony A7R5, released in November 2022, takes fourth place. Followed by the Sony A7 IV that's been around for almost two years now, and it's one of the best-selling cameras of 2023, as well as 2022. Followed in sixth place for the third and final Sony camera, the Sony A7C II, released at the end of August. And the Sony A7C Mark II is the third camera in the top 10 that was released after May and continues to perform well. Sony seems to, well, Sony has a really good idea of what the camera market wants and they're doing very, very well. A company that started in mirrorless cameras just, what, about a decade ago? A company that didn't have an awful lot of experience with digital cameras. And yes, there's the Mavica and all those other cameras, but when we look at, well, Nikon and Canon, we're going back decades. We're going back to the 40s, to the 30s, to the 50s. And it's really impressive that in just 10 short years, Sony has managed to, well, place at around second place with around 26.1% market share. And that's impressive. But that's it for Sony now. Let's turn our attention to some other camera companies. The Ricoh GR3X took seventh place, the only Ricoh in the top 10, a camera that didn't even bother to show up in the Yodobashi top 10. While the Fujifilm X-S10 took eighth place, and it's the first of two Fujifilm cameras in the top 10, with the Fujifilm X-T5 coming in at 10th place. And in ninth place, 
we have the Panasonic S5 Mark II, the first Panasonic camera to have a face detect autofocus system. And this is a really big deal. This had us believing that Panasonic was getting ready to refresh the S1 series. After all, here we are in January of 2024. Happy New Year's, by the way. Five years since Panasonic announced the S1 and the S1R. So we really do expect that within the first or second quarter of this year, that we're gonna get a refresh of the S1, the S1R, and maybe even the S1H. And if Panasonic chooses not to do this, that would be a big deal. That would put us at around five and a half to six years after the announcement of the S1 and the S1R. And that's something I can't really see them doing. But what's really interesting about Map Camera, while they're a well-known and recognized Japanese retailer, just like Yodabashi, they seem to have either a different customer base or they sell different cameras because there are some notable differences between what is placing in the top 10 at Yodabashi versus Map Camera. I mean, you can see the list right here. Sony isn't dominating the top 10. They do have three notable entries, but Nikon's doing very well as well. And of course, we have Fujifilm in the top 10 along with Ricoh and a Panasonic. But one thing is consistent though, is that what we're seeing out of Asia is that Canon isn't doing all that well. Oh, and one last thing, Map Camera also reported the top 10 selling lenses of 2023. Nikon did very well with three lenses in the top 10, taking first and ninth place. And it's not surprising to see that the 180 to 600 millimeter is in there. Sony also did well with the Sony FE 20 to 70 millimeter, as well as the Sony FE 24 to 70 and the 50 F 1.4. What is surprising, we only saw one Sigma lens in the top 10, and that's the 18 to 50 millimeter F 2.8, but we do see two Tamron lenses, the 28 to 75 f2.8 and the Tamron 28 to 200 millimeter. And if you are interested in purchasing any of the lenses or camera bodies mentioned in this video, then please consider using my affiliate links, these ones right here, which I also have in the description down below. This channel wouldn't be where it is today without your support. Thanks to your support by using these affiliate links, I've been able to make really big purchases for this channel, such as the Canon EOS R5, the RF 50 millimeter F1.2, the recent purchase of the 200 to 800 millimeter, the 100 to 500 millimeter, and I'm even considering the 24 to 105 F2.8. I just wanna see what other lenses might be announced in the first quarter before making my decision. I just, it is important to be transparent though and let you know that by using my affiliate links, while it won't cost you anything extra, I will get anywhere from two to 12% back and that's what really helps support this channel. Believe it or not, it's actually not the revenue coming from YouTube, it's the affiliate link revenue that really makes the biggest difference. So for all of you that have used my affiliate links in the past, it's greatly appreciated. I have them for Adorama, b and and Amazon.com, all down below, so thank you very much. However, I also believe in supporting your local camera store. Even I myself don't use these links. I support Patrick at Downtown Camera, he's my local camera store, but I still do purchase from B&H from time to time, especially when they don't have well, kit that's available at my local camera store. Your local camera store, they greatly appreciate your business. Um, and when it comes to pre-ordering gear, I highly recommend reaching out to them. And also follow the reviews online. Whenever you do pre-order stuff, be very, suspicious of, be very suspicious of any camera store that's asking you to put down a substantial deposit. My store doesn't ask for that and many don't. So just be very careful because in today's day and age where the economy isn't doing as well. The last thing you want to do is put down a sizable deposit to find out the camera store is no longer in business when you go to pick up your gear. But um, there are many reputable and solid camera stores out there. Check the reviews online, reach out to your local camera store, go in there, check them out. Um, they greatly appreciate your business. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for your business, or thank you so much for watching here in 2024. Happy New Year. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what the top 10 camera sales are at stores like Adorama, b and and as well as some of the camera stores in Europe. I'm really curious to see how they differ from what's going on in Japan. One thing that's happened in Japan over the past, well, three years, is the yen has significantly dropped in terms of their buying power when compared to the US dollar. While other countries such as Canada, the pound, and the euro well, they haven't dropped nearly as much against the US dollar. In fact, the Canadian dollar, I think is down around 2%, the British pound around eight to 7%, the Euro around 7%. So that is one of the reasons why we might see different purchases. 
So that's one of the reasons why we might see different purchases in Japan, because the cost of the cameras just seems to be a little bit more out of reach compared to what we see in the United States, Canada, Europe, and the United Kingdom. But that's it for now. Have yourself a great day, a great week, and a great year. Happy New Year to you and yours, and we'll see you again soon.